Hello. Today, let's talk about a look in the mirror. Our scripture text for today is found in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. This is the parable of the unforgiving servant, or what we might call a look in the mirror. The parable is a story in three acts. Act 1, undeserved forgiveness. Jesus told his disciples a parable. A certain king wished to settle his accounts. One of his servants was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Now hear this, please. The ordinary pay for a servant was one denarius per day. It took 6,000 denarii to make one talent. But this servant owed the king 10,000 talents, that is 60 million denarii, 60 million days' work. Do you know how many years that would take to pay? 164,383 years of work. The servant would have to work all of his life and the lives of over 5,000 of his offspring to pay that debt. So the servant fell at the feet of the king and he begged him, Please be patient with me. I will repay everything. The king was compassionate and he released the man of his entire debt. Can you imagine? You owe the IRS all the money that you and your family will make for the next 5,000 children. And out of the kindness of their hearts, they just forgive it. The man was stunned. He knew that he should, should have been in prison for like the rest of his life. Instead, he was free to live. Such was the heart of the king. Act 2, Unexpected Crisis. When the servant was called before the king to pay his debts, he thought that was the crisis of his life. But no, another crisis was just ahead. Jesus explains, when the servant's debt was forgiven, he went out and found a fellow servant who owed him 100 denarii. Not 60 million denarii, not 60,000 denarii, not 600 denarii, but 100 denarii. He had just been forgiven a debt equal to the lifetime wages of over 5,000 of his children. How many generations that would be, I don't know. But then, he found a fellow servant who owed him three months' wages. And the servant went ballistic. He seized his fellow servant by the throat and choked him, saying, Pay back what you owe me. The fellow servant fell down and begged him, Please be patient with me. I will repay everything. Those were the words that the servant had spoken to the king only moments before. But the servant did not recognize his own words. He did not make the connection of the forgiveness that he had just received and the forgiveness that he was being asked to give. The servant was unwilling to give in the smallest measure the mercy and forgiveness that he had just received in great abundance. Instead, he threw his fellow servant into prison. Do you see what Jesus is teaching? Jesus later explained, what you have done to the least of these, my brethren, you have done unto me. So when the king encountered his servant in debt, the king encountered Jesus. And when the servant encountered his fellow servant in debt, the servant encountered Jesus. The servant thought that the only crisis of his life was when he was called to stand before the king. His king was gracious, but what he did not realize was the unexpected crisis of his life was when his fellow servant stood before him, when he encountered Jesus in the form of his fellow servant, and when he was asked to forgive him, that was his life's unexpected crisis. Act 3, Unintended Consequences. Now, when the other servants saw what had happened, and how the forgiven servant had treated his fellow servant and had thrown him into prison, they were grieved. And they went to their master and told him about the behavior of the unforgiven servant. The king was angry, and he called for the forgiven servant. He said, You wicked servant! 
I forgave you all that debt because you entreated me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow servant, as I had mercy on you? And the Lord handed him over to the basanistes, the torturers, until he should repay all that was owed. Jesus concluded the parable saying, So shall my heavenly Father also do to you, if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. What does this parable mean? What is Jesus teaching us? First, Jesus is teaching us that our Heavenly Father gives us undeserved forgiveness. You remember the passage started when Peter asked how often he had to forgive his brother, and Peter suggested a gracious seven times. Jesus responded with an animated, I do not say seven times, but seventy times seven times. In other words, an unlimited number of times. This is the heart of God. Jesus desires that we have such a heart as well. This is the heart exhibited by the king in the parable that Jesus told. An enormous debt is owed to the king, but the king forgives the entire debt. He does this not because the servant earned or merited it, but because this was the nature and character of the king. Next, Jesus is teaching us that the expectation of our Father in heaven is that we would give each other the same grace and mercy that he has given to us. When we are wronged, we should be quick to forgive with mercy and kindness in our hearts. Do you remember the lesson that Jesus gave to his disciples when he taught them the Lord's Prayer? You know the Lord's Prayer. In the center of the prayer, he teaches us to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And when the prayer is ended, Jesus adds on this teaching. For if you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Ouch! Did you hear that? Finally, Jesus is teaching us that there are consequences when we break the commandments of God. In this case, there are consequences for our lack of forgiveness. The servant who would not forgive was called wicked by the king, and for that reason he was handed over to the tormentors until he should pay the entire debt. And Jesus declared that the Heavenly Father will do the very same thing to each of us who does not forgive our brother or sister from our heart. Conclusion a look in the mirror. Now it's possible that you may have a couple of questions as you hear this parable. You may be wondering, why is it that God has told us to forgive others an unlimited number of times, and yet the king in this parable only forgave the servant once? The king forgave the great debt, but the servant still held a debt against his fellow servant, and for this the king judged him and condemned him to the tormentors. That does not appear to be undeserved and unlimited forgiveness by the king. And you may also be wondering, isn't the chief article of the faith that we are justified by grace through faith, apart from works of the law? And yet this parable appears to teach that we will be judged according to the works of the law. Specifically, we must forgive others, or the Father in heaven will not forgive us. If we forgive others, our Heavenly Father will forgive us. If we do not forgive others, we will not be forgiven by the Father in heaven. So, are we judged by God for our works, in this case, our ability for, to forgive others? Or are we forgiven on account of our faith? How do you reconcile this apparent contradiction? Of course, you know that God's word does not contradict itself. So, what are we missing? The contradiction goes away when we understand what faith in God truly is. God is gracious beyond our imagining. 
His mercy is new every morning, and his love is so great that he gave his only begotten Son to die for us, that whosoever believes in him, that is, has faith in him, will not perish but have eternal life. As Jesus said, he who believes in me has faith in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believes in me has faith in me shall never die. We are justified by grace through faith apart from works of the law. Your faith is a miraculous creation of God by water and the Spirit. Even as faith lives within you, God himself lives within you. You are born again. Your faith, your new birth, causes you to will and to do the commandments of God. You do not do them perfectly. Only Jesus does that. But still you want to do them, and you wish you could do them perfectly. Your forgiveness and your ability to forgive others come to you with the gift of faith that God has given to you. Your forgiveness from God and your forgiveness for others are yours by the power of the divine presence of God within you. Surely, you will still sin. But does this mean that you lose your salvation? No. We are genuinely sorry. We confess our sins and we are forgiven. Now, when you are wronged, you know that you should forgive even when you do not feel that in your emotions and when it does not seem possible for you to do it. But Christ is in you. By grace through faith, your Lord calls you and empowers you to forgive. This is the work of Jesus within you. Again, you do not do this perfectly. It may be as a weak and needy and dependent child that you try to keep his command to forgive. Yet in faith, you do try nonetheless. And when you're not completely successful, that's not the same thing as denying your faith in Christ or rejecting his commandments as an atheist. Your attempts to forgive are not the same as Pharaoh's, who received countless chances from God and still kept his hard heart and was still unwilling to have faith and unwilling to forgive others. You see, your faith is not measured by how great it is, but how great the one is who gave you that faith. By faith, you know that you need forgiveness, and by faith, you know that you need to forgive others. These are gifts from God that are created in your heart, in the person of faith. Of course, a person can reject faith. A person can harden his or her heart, rejecting God's forgiveness and rejecting giving forgiveness to others. But today, this teaching from Christ is a call for you to take a look in the mirror. I suspect that you remember some people who have wronged you. You could say that they owe you a debt, but the word of Christ in you is saying something more. Compared to the debt of all the sins that you owe Christ, the debt of those people to you is really pretty small. You can forgive them. Entrust them to Jesus. If it is his will that they receive his vengeance, leave that to him. If it is his will that they meet their tormentors, whomever they may be, leave that to him. If it is his will that they receive a fresh start and a new day, leave that to him. Whatever he chooses, it will be because they are weak, needy, and dependent children, and because he loves them just like he loves you. Jesus Christ has forgiven you all your sins forever. Your great debt is gone. How wonderful that God's gifts of faith and forgiveness are for you. In addition to giving you faith and forgiveness, the faith that God has given you enables you to forgive others. Amen.